I was planning on going somewhere else and I was just driving along, having just been to Adelstrop, and I saw a sign for Chassel Chasselton House Gardens. Chassel Chaselton. Chaselton Chasselton. It's a National Trust house and luckily I have a car that gets me in for free. So I thought I'm going to come see what it's all about. Lovely gate. Can we come in? This is Jacobean. Quite often you see buildings like this in brick, but this is a lovely Cotswold stain. Lovely honey colour. Wow, look at that. An interesting thing when it comes to shadows in painting pictures, quite often you can tell that something's been drawn by as from a photograph because of the shadows and you've got these two bits brought forward and then the sun is casting these shadows down. And very often in a photograph it's, it's a split second and, and when you copy the photograph then it looks like that split second whereas if you sit down and sketch then of course the light is changing and the sun is changing and, and, a, and a picture that somebody takes by just sitting and drawing will look very, very different because the angles of the, the light and everything will change as it goes along. I love these plaster beasts on the wall. They, they look like they could do with a good meal, I think. Jacobean is kind of just after Queen Elizabeth I. And when I was a boy, I went to a boarding school and that was a Jacobean building. And this has so many kind of echoes of it and the staircase here. And, um, you know, some of the carving is just slightly wonky when you compare it to sort of Victorian machine carving. Again, lovely plaster work. I love these pomegranates here. And this is the view out of the window of the long gallery right up at the top of the house and wait until you see it. Look at that ceiling. Wouldn't it be amazing to have a curved ceiling like that? This great long room, light pouring in. Absolutely fantastic. These fabulous floors with enormous wide planks of wood. Wood panelling on the walls and you could just... This is where all the posh people went but it was right up at the top of the house. This is classic National Trust. You're allowed to sit on some things, but if they don't want you to sit on it, they add a little teasel on the chair to <laughs> stop you sitting. has a wonderful kind of, you know, left-to-its-own-devices feel about this house. I don't think you'd find plants like this on a shelf in other stately homes. And handmade signs, too. They um, replaced a wooden floor with stone and so they had to add these pillars down in the cellar to keep the whole thing up and to cope with the weight. How wonderful, anemones flowering in the garden so uh, spring can't be that far away. And here we have the croquet lawns, very important. A rookery up there. nest building time. This is rhubarb, <laughs> which is just sprouting. It will have great big leaves on it. You only eat the stalk and these are rhubarb forcing pots. So they're being grown in the dark. So they're shooting up to try and find <laughs> some light. And so they should appear a lot earlier and be eaten a lot earlier as well. Personally, I don't like rhubarb. <laughs> it's, it kind of coats your teeth with, it's like, you know, chalk or something for several hours. But uh, you can put a sort of lemon in it, which kind of sometimes counteracts that. But then Mrs. Rayner does make this fantastic cake, this rhubarb and date cake, which is very, very special. I do like that. It's all full of tofu, just catching the sun. Very lovely. Beautiful. I think it's a spelt pine. Beautiful tree. Fabulous. Aha, teas and cakes in the church, most important. This is a very satisfying piece of engineering. <laughs> so I'm having my tea, Victoria sponge cake, which had not been made by the scouts themselves, but by their supporters who were raising funds for a new scout hut. And we're sat out here in the churchyard with these amazing old tombstones going back to 17 something or other beautiful carving that's all hand carved not machine carved and here you can see how it would have once been decorated all like this 
until the uh, Puritans came and painted over everything and turned it white, which happened in all the churches around the country. And all the stained glass, original stained glass, would have been knocked out and replaced with plain white glass. And so quite often when you see stained glass in churches now, it's very often Victorian and has been replaced in later years. That looks old there. It might have been saved before they came, or it might just be bits that have been put back together. I love this carving on the uh, pillars here. It's very, very simple and obviously done by the local guy. But uh, very interesting, kind of trying to fit it all in in a pattern. And isn't this great? This is the dovecot where they kept their doves. And why would they keep doves? Well, I think they probably ate them. <laughs> so uh, they built this fantastic okay. thing out in a field. And I, th I love the way the light's shining. So I wonder if I ought to do a little sketch of this for a video, how to draw a dovecot. <laughs> well, it's a very quiet afternoon, mostly because I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty tired. And, worn out. It's a very kind of quiet, lost in time kind of place. It's like somebody moved out in 1952 and nothing has changed really. And probably not a lot has changed since 1752 before that. So uh, it's kind of one of those special little places you come across in Britain. Heavens of the National Trust that they look after these places so that you can just be driving along thing. Oh, I can, can have a look at that. <laughs> I didn't feel like doing any drawing. <laughs> just felt like pottering about. And no, it wasn't that much to draw. I think I take pictures of things which I'll probably draw later from, maybe. And now I'm going to go and see my sister. And then tomorrow I'm going up to London for committee meetings. <laughs> and then Friday I'm going to the factory where my books get printed. And I'm having a kind of meeting with lots of other children's authors and we're going to meet there and they'll tell us all about it. I've been around the factory before so I'm going to be kind of uh, talking about my experience as a self-published author working with lightning source and how how my books get published and that kind of thing so i hope i'll be of some use to some other author coming along for the day and that is about it thanks for watching and you can support this channel and get so much more on my patreon page click to find out more Make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Render Drawing channel on YouTube. And in the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.